Sometimes when I come up here, I'm just at a place that I just want to stand in the sunshine, S-O-N, the sunshine, and let God be God. Just let God be God. Give me a little bit right here, Joey. Just let God be God. Father, we love you today. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And Father, I realize that we're clay. And I realize, Lord, that we're so undeserving. And I realize, God, that you could have saved anybody in the world besides me. But you did. And I thank you for it. I thank you, God, that as a young man, when I didn't even know it was you, Lord, speaking to my heart, in the tenderness of my youth, you are working on me. And you were speaking to me. Just the little incidental things of life that so many would overlook. It was you all along the way that was showing us who you are. Lord Moses was on the mountain, Exodus 33. And Moses said these words, Lord, I'll go, but I won't go alone. And Lord, if you go with me, show me your glory. And God, would you do that again for the people in this room and those that's watching, those wherever this is being seen or heard, would you take us into your glory, into the glory cloud, into that place of your presence, that cloud representing your presence. And Lord, take us there. Because Lord, I know today if we don't find you, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. So Lord, let your glory fill this place in a phenomenal way. May not be like what we've always been used to. May not, may not even be anything that we've experienced. But God, we want you in this place today. In Jesus' name. Can you just give him a wave offering? Can you just give him a wave offering? Where would we be without God today? Any of us. Where would we be without him? Where would we be? Amen. Let me make one quick announcement as we move forward this morning that we are going to be having a membership class tonight for new members. If you want to meet at 5 o'clock in that classroom right behind that wall right there, I'll be there with you for a while chit-chatting. And then next Sunday morning, we'll be taking in new members into the church. It's been a long time since we've done that. I'm one of these guys that I'm not trying to build a membership role. I'm trying to build the kingdom. I've done quick membership classes and people leave as quick as they come. I'm not interested in that. Not at all. I'm interested in building people and disciples and people that will be an asset to the church. And people that know who we are as a church. And that's what my desire is. And just to let people know we love them and to care for them. And we want them to be a part of this body. Amen. I got a message on my heart that I want to share with you. And if I get done with it, if I don't, that's okay too. I'll, I'll go as long as... I'm supposed to, and then I'll just stop there. Let me just sort of say it like this. L let me say it in two ways. I'm not God. Wow. 
But I'm here to do my best to represent God. As Moses did before the people. I'm not even Moses, nowhere near. There's things in the Scripture that I don't understand. Don't fall out of your seat yet. I remember when I was getting started in ministry, I used this phrase to myself, I can't preach. I don't know the Bible. I would say, I can't preach because I don't know everything the Bible says. And when I learn the Bible and I know everything the Bible says, then I'll preach. Do you know I wouldn't be doing it to this day if I understood all the mysteries of God. There's a lot of things I don't understand. There's a lot of things I don't get to this day. By my confession, I've already told you I'm not God. I was challenged this past week, and if you're watching, God bless you. My faith was challenged. It's okay. I can, I can deal with that. But to tell me I have no faith, as I was told, is a horse of a different color. I'm not God. I can't heal nobody. I can't take a heart that's sin sick, make it over again, but I know a man who can. I wish. I told somebody, and don't misunderstand what I'm saying, it's just what I said. I said, Annette, I said, I wish I could just wiggle my nose and make it all better. Don't you too? But I can't. It hurts my heart to see people hurt. It brings me to tears as a human being to see so many people hurt. And Dixie, I feel absolutely helpless. Because we're living in a day and an hour where it seems like that everywhere you go is more pain and more misery and more heartache and more hardships. And you know what? That just proves to you and I how much we really do need God. So when I was challenged earlier in the week, it really put me on a path of searching myself in my belief of God. My faith. And I'm going to tell you something today, friend. My faith is solid as a rock. Because I know in whom I have believed. And in him, the Bible says, there is, James, the book of James says, in him there is no shadow of, shadow of turning. In him there's no variance. In other, way, in other words, that just simply means God is not one way today and another way tomorrow. But yet when Paul began to teach about a lot of the stuff that Paul talked about, Paul was even caught up into the third heavens. Kathy, by the way, you know I'm not there. <laughs> Paul was caught up into the third heavens. And God took Paul on this, let me use my term, this crazy wild ride. As he went up into the third heavens and, and, he, and he showed Paul this open heaven, if you would, and so much that Paul came back down to the earth and he said, there's things that I have Seen that it would, let me say it like this, that would absolutely blow your mind. And Paul said, well, here's the thing. Along, along with that revelation of God comes a thorn. There's mine, it's still over there. It's a little drier now, but it's over there. For you that was here a couple of Sunday nights ago. Paul said that there was given to me also a thorn. He said a thorn in the flesh. I don't know what it was. The Bible don't reveal that to us. 
But he said that the messenger of Satan come and buffeted him. Every day, day in, day out. There's that old messenger of the devil right there in front of me. I don't know how many of you have ever fought the devil. I mean, I'm talking about Johnny went down to Georgia and played the little fiddle. I mean, you know, whatever Charlie Daniels did. I don't know about all that. <laughs> Somebody said, I fought the devil and I won. Job fought the devil. Look at the book of Job. I, I don't have time to go into that. When they went out to present themselves as the children of God that day, along comes the devil. Newsflash, 911 coming up. As long as you live in this natural body, you're going to fight the devil. Every day, that rascal's going to show his thinking head. You'll be floating along thinking everything's going along good, singing zippity doo da, zippity day, Mr. Bluebird on your shoulder. And all of a sudden, Paul said, I sought God. I think he begged God. God, I got, a good, I got ministry to do. I got, a, I got things to do, God. I've got, a, I've got to get busy going to Macedonia and, and Galatia and all these other places. That, but all along the way, he fought. The devil. Let me ask you something. Anybody in the room brave enough to say, I fought the devil this week? <laughs> the rest of you, God bless you, because your day's coming. But he said, I sought the Lord. But he said these words, my grace is. You know me long enough, I pick up on these little bitty words. These words jump off. The page at me when I'm studying. They just, bam, there they are. And God says, my grace is. My grace is. Woo! Amen. <laughs> it's there, Ronnie. His grace is there. With what you're dealing with. His grace is, what you're dealing with. I could go around this room, what you're dealing with. What you're dealing with. What you're dealing all the way around this room. Because God's given me the favor of to be here with you long enough to know what you deal with so I can pray and I can bear that burden with you. But he says, my grace is. Somebody say, say that with me. My grace is. My grace is enough. Sufficient. You will not go in lack. It's more than efficient. It's more than enough. Amen. Sometimes we struggle in trying to figure God out. Yeah. I've done that for a long time. And I've not figured Him out yet. I go over in the book of Isaiah, and it talks about this in Isaiah. Isaiah is a good place to talk about this. I think it's a long chapter 55 along through there. Because every time we think we've got God figured out, we'll get lazy. Hello, somebody. We'll just get in this neutral zone, you know. We'll just sort of float along. But there's something about God that keeps me, I guess the word I'm looking for is curious. To do more. To search for more. To, 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 to allow my heart to... Go after him more. Because he says there in the word, in the book of Isaiah, you know where I'm going. She's already said it. He said that, that my ways are not. Now let me ask you something. Now I'm just preaching what I feel like God's pouring into me right now. There's not a person in this room, and I learned this through life, still learning it in life. And if you've got small children in this room, you'll learn it soon enough. You can't give a kid everything that kid wants. There's some things in life that a kid may want, but a kid don't need. I was given a, I still got it. I was given a 22 rifle by my dad at 12. I still got it. I was given another 22 rifle by another man, same kind. Marlin 22 long rifle's got a squirrel on the stock, little back, you know. 
I used it a lot. I popped a lot of squirrels with it growing up. But there ain't a man or a woman in this room that I would suggest giving a twenty two rifle to any kid this day. You may want it, but you don't need it. Now, some of you men are probably going to argue with me, and that's okay. And the reason I say that is because God, we think we always want something from God. God, this gigantic God Santa Claus sitting on the throne of heaven, God, give me this. And God says, wait. And then we get mad and we pout two weeks. Now I'm meddling, ain't I? Sometimes you got to wait. I'm not going to repeat it the same way Jensen repeated it years away. Well, why not? Okay, okay, okay I'm, I'm debating it. Sometimes the wait's what we don't like. Jensen Franklin preached, preached a message one time, and he preached it, and he said, sometimes it's hell in the hallway. And because there's one door closing and another door opening, this door's not opened yet, this door's closed, and you're standing in the unknown. And it seems like all of hell is coming against you and coming against me. We don't know which way to turn. We don't know which way to turn. We don't know what to do. And we don't know whether to put our hand on that door and go back the way we were before or put our, our hand on this door to the new adventure that God has in front of us. And sometimes that new adventure that's in front of us is the most scariest part of being who you are. I can only say this from my experience. Can't say it from your experience, but my experience. Sherry and I got married. She was 18. She was 15 days 18 when we got married. I was 20. Let me just meddle again for a minute. I wouldn't even suggest any 20-year-old getting married today. Can I, can I, do you care? Thank you. Thank you. She's here this morning. We got married in September 17th. She was still in high school in the 12th grade. In the 12th grade. What girl in her right mind would marry somebody in the 12th grade? Oh, I'm not done yet. She said thank you. Because, because I was so immature. But yet we felt like God had us on a course together, a journey. Young, not knowing, had our hand on the doorknob on this side of a married life and having children and all the stuff, not knowing what was in front of us. But on this side, we knew we sure enough wasn't going back down that road. Now somebody in this room right now, you're standing there. You can put your hand on the doorknob, the place you've been, and you can reach forward and put your hand on the doorknob of where God's fixing to take you. And you're scared. Like I was when I was 20 year old marrying the most beautiful girl that I could ever marry and meet in all my life. Married 38 years and still love her and ain't lost an ounce of love the whole time we've been married. But that don't mean it's always been easy. He says in the Word, when we think about moving forward in our faith, sometimes... Well, I, the only way I can say it's the way I feel it. Sometimes faith is just plain old blind. Because you just don't know. God says again in Isaiah, and, and she might have even found, found that one. He said, my ways are not your ways. He said, and your ways are much more, my ways are much more higher than yours. And all the trying to figure it out. There you go. She's so good. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. We think we know what we need. But I'm glad today to know this, that God knows what we need. He knows what we need. There's another scripture that comes to my mind. I think it's over in 2 Corinthians 5.17 or something like that. 
5, 7. I'm sorry. And he says this in the Word. He says, For we walk by faith. Faith. Faith is stepping out on nothing and expecting something to be there when your foot lands. That's good right there. God, I don't know how to do this. Just do what I tell you to do. I'm scared. Go scared. I could give you all kinds of examples through the Word. Now let me hit the timeout. What's that thing called in, in, a, in football when you've got a half time between third and second quarter? Got time? You got a, I don't know what it's called. I don't know what foot, half time. <laughs> Y'all know I don't do sports. Sometimes God will put you there in a place where you don't know what to do. It's not fun to be there. But we got to trust him. I got up on that football game, forgot what I was saying. So y'all have to forgive me right there. I was going somewhere with that and just, maybe I didn't need to say it anyway. So you look at the scripture and you said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Now I know what I was going to say. There's a difference between trusting God. Now watch this closely. There's a difference between trusting God Missing God, doing something crazy or silly or stupid, and then saying, okay, God, I did this. Now, God, you pay for it, or God, you do it. Because, God, I was just, no. The Bible says, I go back to my service the other night, where the Bible says that my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Don't get mad at the preachers too early. We do things by faith that's verified by the Word of God, we don't do things, I don't want to say that word again, stupid. We don't do things stupid. And then expect God to do it because we've obligated God. God is bound to His Word. God's already told us, Brother Sparks, what He would do in His Word. A lot of the things that God gets blamed for, God don't do. Be wise. The scripture says that we've got to be wise as a, and harmless as a. In all of Solomon's writings, the one thing that Solomon wrote about more than anything else was what? In all of your getting, get wisdom. You say, why are you preaching this today? I'll tell you why. Because somebody in this room is standing Right here. You know if you open this door, you're going to go back. And I'm going to tell you what. Your back is going to be much, much, much worse than you ever dreamed what going back would look like. But I don't have any directions yet about here. But you know, that's when we trust Him. Proverbs 3 says these words, Trust in the Lord Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. Trust? I ain't trusted nobody in 15 years. Because anything and everything I've ever put my trust in has fallen flat at my feet. And I've been hurt, I've been discouraged, I've been disgusted. Maybe you were putting your trust in the wrong things and the wrong people. In the wrong situations. Oh, by the way, before y'all start, give me another minute or two. I said in the beginning, I'm not God. I'm not God. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> I'm not God. He is. If I was God, I could do it. But I'm not. But here's the thing. Without a shadow of a doubt, He's able to do what you need Him to do. I don't know, Sister Cox, what the outcome's going to be. 
I have no clue. All we can do is put our foot forward and say, God, I'm trusting you with all of my heart. I'm leaning not to my own understanding, but God, in all of my ways. Proverbs 3, I'm going to acknowledge you. In all of my ways, I'm going to acknowledge you. And you will direct my path. One more quick little thing. When Jesus called these disciples out of the boat, they were there, the two sons of Zebedee and Peter was there and they were minding their own business. They was catching and eating fish and selling fish. They were fishermen. And here comes Jesus and messed up their whole financial market, their plan. A divine interruption. And Jesus, this is not exactly King James. What are you doing down there, guys? For they were fishers. They were fishing. They were doing what they knew to do at the time. If you don't know what to do, just keep doing what you're doing until God gives you some new direction. He called them out of the boats. I've got plans for your life. I've got plans for you that you know not of. Hello? He says, come and I'll make you fishers of men. I'll give you a new identity. I'll give you a new lease on life, a new purpose, a new calling. I'll redirect everything in your life. That's a hard blow, ain't it? <laughs> I just felt a little quiver here for something, but it'll be okay. You may feel like you're going to be, oh my God, I don't want to do this. Okay. I've already messed it all up, so I'm going to take another risk. You may feel like you're going to be a fireman the rest of your life. But I believe God's got deeper plans. You can be a good fireman, a great fireman. For the desire of your heart, God will give it to you in Kelsey. But there's other things there that I don't even know about. And God says, I love him enough not to let him go and to send this preacher by and tell him to hold on but yet let go and trust him. I don't know nothing, do I? You've not told me. I don't know anything. There may not be anything. It may not be preaching. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you better do what he tells you to do. And don't hold on to the security so tight that you'll miss what he's saying. You say, are you picking on Troy? No, I love Troy. I love Troy enough to tell him the truth. Well, okay then. Pastor Green. How long are we going to hold on to what we believe is our security and miss? I was reading... Every church needs to know its purpose. Every church needs to have a vision. Every, every church needs to have its identity. Every church needs to know where it's going. Every pastor needs to be able to lead a church in vision. Every pastor needs to know where that church is going. Or he needs to sit down, basically, is what it was saying. You talk about pressure. I told Kathy this morning and last night and everything, I was putting messages together that I was going to preach this morning. Let me tell you something. I did not hit but one verse of scripture that I had even looked at and didn't even look up when I came up here because it was a last minute mess, last minute uh, scripture that come to me. And that was the one in second. That one is still up there. That's the only thing that I had made reference to while I've been up here this morning. That's getting me. I don't know what that, that's just saying something to me. You say, well, what? Still holding on to this. But yet there's this. As a church, we may be holding secure right here. But what God wants to do, God wants to blow your mind. 
Chris is over in Children's Church. I look back there. He's not there. Me, he and I was doing this little survey thing last year, year before last. I think it's year before last. And I think the voting thing also with Ron, I think, I think it actually played out to be the same. There's 26,500 people in the city of Thomasville. If we just hold on to what we've always done, we'll never reach them. But we like it right here, preacher. It's our, it's, we're comfortable right here. God says, I've got to get you away from here to take you there. Now, I'm not going to keep preaching, but I got a lot of stuff that I'd like to say right now. I'm only going to mention it and keep on going. But Abraham, take Isaac to the mountain. Take your son, your only son. I love Isaac. I love Isaac. But God said, I've got different plans for Isaac. I got different plans for you. But we've got to be willing to let go here in order to move forward in what God's got planned for our lives. Now, where did all this, how does all this fit together? It all fits together like this. We've got to learn as a person and as a church And again, it don't sound right. It's even hard for me to say it because I know who I am. Because I'm Mr. Fix-It. I want to fix stuff. That's who I am. It's ingrained in me pastorally and the person that I am. And I'm not saying anything bad, but Sherry and I, she says, Alan, I need, I'm on the front row seat because she's my wife and I love her. I'm going to fix, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Because she's my wife and I love her. But Brother Wes, there's a few things I'm learning right now in my life. I can't fix everything. I'm not talking about for her. Even with her, I can't fix everything. And what I hear God saying is that the church has got to get back to the place and to the point where the flesh dies and we get to the place that our total reliance is on him you say what does the future hold are we going to have to go to food storage and food bins are we going to have to get numbers and get in lines for food and uh, what's rationing I don't know but this one thing I do know David said I was young now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the, his seed begging for bread. And God said, hey, consider the lilies, they toil not, neither do they spin. He said, even look at this. He said, birds have nests. And he said, look at this field. He said, Solomon, and all of this, was not raid, a raid like you. God said, I'm going to take care of you. I don't know, Brother Sparks, what tomorrow holds, but I, knew, I know who holds tomorrow. So what are we to do, Pastor? If there's ever been a day and an hour where we pull together, and we do. When we work together, we pull together. Is the day. I'm talking about families and people and the nation. Everybody around us. I wish I could just stop right here. It's 12 o'clock on the dot. There might be a time when we do need each other. We might need each other more than what we know right now. You may be the only person that can get the other person 
to God. It might be you. You may hold the ticket. You may hold the key to somebody's salvation. It might be you. Is your faith, my faith, strong enough? Tell somebody the simple plan of salvation and to get them to Jesus? I hope so. Trust so. Did I ever give them my text or anything at all? I don't know if I did. I'll save that maybe for another day. Tonight, whenever. I don't think I'll do it tonight. Maybe that message there was from me. Maybe it wasn't for you. I don't know. But the Lord says this in His Scripture. He said to those disciples, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And then He said, I am with you always. And lo, I am with you always. Stand with me. Father, wow, whatever it was worth, whatever needed to be said, we prayed before church. And we asked God that our lips would say the words that needed to be said. And Lord, this is not what I thought I was going to do today at all. But Lord, you knew more than anything what needed to be said. Father, I pray, God, even now. That we would trust in you. That we would believe in you. That we would put our faith and our confidence in you. In a new and a living way. And Father, people that's in this room right now. That's struggling in their life with direction and knowing which way to turn and what to do. Father, I pray, God, that they would seek you and find you and listen to you and find their way in you. Father, I pray for this congregation that God is, the scripture says, not to grow weary in well-doing. But in due time you shall reap if you faint not. That we keep our eyes on Jesus. We keep our eyes on the Lord. And God, we know today that God is our healer. That God, that you're the one that can heal us. You're the one that can restore us. And you're the one that can give us the peace that passeth all understanding. And God, you are the one that can do the work in our life that needs to be done. And in those same verses of Scripture in Isaiah, it says, Seek me, and you shall find me. Jeremiah said, When we search for you with all of our heart. So God, we all turn our hearts to seek you so that we will not rely upon the abilities of the man to do what only you are attempting to do in our lives. And Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor. Just slip up your hand and just praise God. If God spoke to you and if God said anything to you today at all, be tender today. Be tender today and teachable today. Be tender today and teachable today. So that in your life you can become even more of what God would have us to be. And Father, we love you today. And we give you the praise for all you're doing. In Jesus' name. Amen. I hope that that was a few nuggets to somebody. And you say, well, it wasn't for me. Well, just throw it over your shoulder. Because somebody back there, somebody back there needs it. <laughs>